And new details are brought to light on the background status of an American citizen held in Russia in charges of espionage. One America's Jack Posobiec has the latest on his alleged activities in Moscow. Recently, the government of Russia detained an individual they claimed was a U.S. spy. Russian media, citing an unidentified Russian intelligence officer, described how Paul Wieland met with a Russian citizen with whom he had cultivated a personal relationship online over social media. This unidentified Russian met with Wieland in his hotel room in Moscow during a wedding which Paul Nealon was attending in the swanky Metropole Hotel. Now, the Russian version of events have Wieland engaging this individual online and then in person during Wieland's personal travel to Russia. Wieland allegedly requested the individual provide a list of names of employees of a security service in Moscow in Russia. The individual then provided Wieland with a USB thumb drive, and a few moments after the exchange, the FSB entered the room and arrested Paul Wieland. One American News reached out to U.S. government associates and officials, and they said that it sounds like this is a sting operation led by FSB against Wieland. He may have caught on to him using the same tactic to meet with other Russians in the past during his extensive travels to Russia over the past decade, which reportedly began while he was still in the U.S. Marines. Although he was separated from service in 2008, Whelan is the director of global security for the Auburn Hills-based auto parts appliancer Borg Warner. Prior to that, he worked in global security for Kelly Services and, of course, served in the Marine Corps doing two tours of Iraq on duty. Whelan holds multiple citizenships for the U.S., Canada, Ireland, and the United Kingdom. On his Russian social media page on VK, most of his contacts on the site are what the New York Times referred to as men with some sort of connection to academies run by the Russian Navy, the Defense Ministry, or the Civil Aviation Authority. Well, even if he had not been a CIA asset, these connections would have undoubtedly have been reported to FSB and flagged as suspicious. Of course, the CIA would never acknowledge if Whelan had been an asset, even if he was a low-level operative operating in a non-official cover. What that means, in clandestine operations, agents under non-official cover, NOC, are operatives who assume covert roles in organizations without official ties to the government for which they work. Now, this would be in contrast to an agent with official cover, where they assume a position in their government, such as diplomatic service, which provides them with diplomatic immunity if their espionage is discovered. Agents under non-official cover do not have a safety net, and if they are captured and charged as spies, they can be subject to severe criminal punishments, up to and including execution. Agents under non-official cover are also usually trained to deny any connection with their government, thus preserving plausible deniability, but also denying them any hope of diplomatic legal assistance or official acknowledgement of their service. An agent sent to spy on a foreign country, for instance, might work as a business person or a worker for a nonprofit organization such as a humanitarian group or an academic. For example, the CIA's Ishmael Jones spent nearly two decades as a knock. Many of the agents memorialized without names or dates of service on the CIA memorial wall are assumed to have been killed or executed in a foreign country as knock agents. In nations with well-established and developed spy agencies, the majority of captured non-native NOC agents, however, have been historically repatriated through prisoner exchanges for other captured NOCs as a form of gentleman's agreement. And if proven true, look for Russia to ask for the return of detained agents in America, such as Maria Butina and the recently detained Dmitry Makareno who was arrested December 29th in Saipan, a U.S. territory, for trafficking night vision scopes from the United States to Russia without U.S. approval. Also, of course, look for Russia to ask the U.S. to, again, drop sanctions against the country to include the Magnitsky Act. We'll continue to follow this story as it develops. I'm Jack Posobiec, One American News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.